the gazing tourist, Gaza is a city that offers everything. Golden beach, blue sea, and an alluring desert landscape. Tall, grand structures next to small, humble dwellings. The magic of the third world. A mixture of wealth and poverty, tradition and progress. Today, Gaza resides at the eye of a blazing storm. A city of a million Palestinian refugees who rage with a legitimate craving for an independent, sovereign state of their own. The peace process with Israel created a new, magnificently styled airport in Gaza, a symbol of the future Palestinian state. But today, there are no passengers, no tourists. It is deserted, and the hope it once generated is shattered, replaced by despair. Only a short while ago, things seemed very different. On November the 2nd, 1998, the Yasser Arafat International Palestinian Airport in Gaza was officially inaugurated. For the long-suffering Palestinian nation, this event symbolized the onset of a new era, the end of a violent struggle for liberation from Israeli occupation, international recognition of the Palestinians' right for self-determination and freedom, and above all, the possibility of normal lives, smiles and dreams. Usually, you like your first baby, and this is why everybody likes Gaza Airport, because this is the first Palestinian airport. It's your first baby. أسعد لحظة في حياتي شعرت فيها عندما هبطنا في مطار غزة بطيارة فلسطينية لأول مرة. The birth pangs of the Palestinian airport were long and painful. The guest of honor at the opening ceremony, President Clinton, arrived by helicopter. The Israelis would not allow the presidential plane to land in Gaza. Still, the Palestinian sense of sovereignty was boosted. Signs posted everywhere cried, today the airport in Gaza, tomorrow Jerusalem, our eternal capital. The airport plans were made in exile. Implementation began upon return from Tunisia. Each step had to be coordinated with the Israelis. Agreeing on a name took three months. It took nine months to concur on the direction of the runway. Even when construction had been completed, another year went by before Israel permitted importing essential navigation equipment. <laughs> According to Israelis, delays were caused by security considerations. They feared the scenario of a Palestinian terrorist flying a commercial airliner directly into the crowded center of Tel Aviv. Finally, the airport was inaugurated, a triumph for peaceful negotiations. Signing the Oslo Agreement, Arafat had dubbed it the peace of the brave. Even he could not predict how much courage and compromise would be required on both sides. Abir watches the historic moment. The new airport has changed her life, bringing prosperity and opening dreamlike possibilities. Today, she is an air stewardess of the National Palestinian Airline. The future looks bright and full of promise. <laughs> Jamal is Air Palestine's chief pilot. A favored son of the revolution, he was chosen long ago to bear the banner of the state-to-be. 
أنا من مواليد 58 شهر أكتوبر في غزة مخيم جباليا درست في القاهرة ومن ثم توجهت إلى لبنان للعمل مع منظمة التحرير ذهبت لتعلم علوم الطيران العسكري في يوغسلافيا عن طريق منظمة التحرير الفلسطينية عند إنهاء الأكاديمية الطيران الحربي في يوغسلافيا أكمل دراستي للطيران المدني كل هذه الفترة كنا نعمل من خلال منظمة التحرير الفلسطينية كخطوط أو كبداية بناء نواة الخطوط الجوية الفلسطينية Jamal, Abir and Nasser are excited today. Every new destination is like a child's first step, and this child wishes to grow. They have only two propeller planes, one jet on the verge of retirement and aspirations for a million passengers a year. <laughs> they hope Palestinian airlines can open up the Gaza Strip to the world. When you see people are uh, traveling from here, they don't have any more uh, difficulties. Just they come here like any other airport. You're minimizing the hours of uh, suffering. We used to take uh, Egypt airline from Jeddah to Egypt, and we used to travel, you know, eight hours, seven hours. You know. This is much better mm -hmm. to take two hours. It's a dream, you know, it's, a, it's an ambition. Not for, for me, it's, it's for all Palestinians to have an aircraft, at least one aircraft, to hold the flag of Palestine and say this is Palestine, Palestinian airline. It's really a dream. It does, not, it does not mean it's an airline. It's not an airline, no. It's our dream. The terminal opens as part of a political deal with the Israelis. The Palestinians are once again required to delete the clauses calling for eradication of Israel and Zionism from the Palestinian Manifesto. A Gaza survey published soon after the opening of the terminal shows 75% of the Palestinian public supporting the peace process, expecting it to boost their quality of life. Cutting floors from Gaza to uh, Amman, Jordan. We put this now in the passenger uh, airplane. But if we get in the future, maybe we'll get a special airplane for cargo. We can uh, export to the Europe, to the United States, and the country. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your attention and wish you a very pleasant flight with Palestinian Airlines. Thank you. Palestinian 141, 123321. Let's get the tower. How do you read? Flight 1414 to Cairo takes off. Everything appears promising. A calm work routine settles in. Nothing foreshadows coming events. summer of the year 2000 ends abruptly. The dream is transformed into a nightmare. Israel claims that the Palestinians have failed to comply with signed agreements, refusing to prevent terrorist attacks originating in their territory and stirring up hostility. Israel postpones its withdrawal from parts of the West Bank agreed upon in Washington. The main issues are control of Jerusalem and the right of Palestinian refugees to return to lands within Israel's sovereign territory. The negotiations between Israelis and Palestinians reach a dead end, turning into a violent confrontation. The Intifada, or awakening in Arabic. The United States tries to intervene, but to no avail. Neither side will budge. Bitterness and frustration mount, playing directly into the hands of the Islamic extremists. Increasing their power, they embark upon a bloody campaign of terror against civilians inside Israel. The Palestinian uprising spreads, claiming many casualties, most of them Palestinians. Blood is not the only price of the Intifada. 
Israel's retribution includes closing down the international airport in Gaza. The planes are grounded. The halls stand empty. The dreamers wait on standby, watching their dreams go up in smoke. <laughs> Only a land route, fully controlled by Israel, leads out of the Gaza Strip now. The towns of the West Bank are closed off completely. The co-pilot, Abdel Nasser, tries to leave the Cairo, where his wife and children now live. He hasn't seen them in two months, and he misses his family. Dispirited and frustrated, Abdel Nasser returns to the air crew's flat. He will not see his family in the near future, nor will he land a plane in Jerusalem as he had dreamed. Grounded against his will, he simulates real life on the computer and crashes right there on the screen. <laughs> The Gaza Strip is under closure. The economy is collapsing. The inhabitants are desperate. The numbers of dead and wounded rise every day. Jamal, the chief pilot, refuses to give up hope. He has too much to lose. <laughs> عن دولة فلسطينية كاملة السيادة مستقلة ذات حدود ذات مطار ذات مينا ذات عاصمة القدس The PLO youth, Arafat's uprising movement, feel they have nothing to lose. They get together in local cafes and weave the future in colors of war. The bells of peace can no longer be heard. Palestinian printers oil the wheels of the revolt 24 hours a day. Yasser Arafat discovers that popular support is leaking to the Islamic extremists. In an attempt to buttress his position, he frees leaders of the Islamic terror organization called Hamas, who had been imprisoned at Israel's request. <laughs> At the Gaza airport, the only rule is unpredictability. Today, an unexpected Israeli announcement may open the place for business. <laughs>
The last two months, uh, you know that I have a flight, maybe one, two, three, five flights. Five flights, two months. You know that? I'm a human, I am my young, very young. I want to fly, I want to work, I want to uh, to go uh, to, to see everything, to talk with everything, without any trade, without airplane uh, flight, uh, maybe uh, every day, every night from other or over uh, my head. <laughs> Okay. The flights are on. No time to lose. The Israelis might change their minds. The Palestinian check-in is quick, a mere prelude to the long and arduous procedure on the Israeli side. Passengers are taken by bus to the Israeli post, where they undergo a thorough security check. The entire process takes over an hour. Now the passengers may board the plane. From this moment, all the scheduled flights has returned to normal. So this means that from this moment, this airport is reopened and uh, it will be operated in accordance with all the previous schedules. And I hope that this will be the last time where uh, uh, the other side may take a, an illegal uh, action to close the aerospace. second flight for this month. We don't fly a lot. This is a real problem. Uh, to be legal, to be a captain, you should have minimum 1,500 hours. I have home now just about 600. With this rate, this is very But I think this, this is for a period, for a short time. Abd El Nasser hope is soon shattered. Once again, he will not gain many hours of flight experience. After a brief episode of apparent normality, the airport closes down as violence rises on both sides. Provocation seems to be the name of this bloody game. General Arik Sharon decides to visit the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, sacred to Arabs and Jews alike. The visit draws the Arab citizens of Israel into the confrontation. In the West Bank, gunfire becomes routine. The IDF constantly retaliates. Violence is on the rise. It's almost war, but neither side wishes to use the word as yet. Both are busy blaming each other for reigniting the blaze. No hope for change appears on the horizon. The Gaza Strip is now divided into three separate areas. Tanks and helicopters patrol continuously, but gunfire aimed at Israel's civilian settlements continues. Islamic terrorists infiltrate the lines, spreading havoc and fear in Israeli cities. This man is a living bomb. He blew himself up with a powerful pack of explosives in a train station in the Israeli city of Nahariya. Before leaving for the suicide mission, he was videotaped by his Hamas commanders. Suicide terror is considered legitimate in some parts of the Arab world. Such terrorism is a major component of the Palestinian struggle against Israel, and it knows no bounds crossing all boundaries and targeting all regimes. It has struck at the very heart and soul of the West. An indescribably painful lesson to those who had felt so safe and removed from its threat.
Islamic terrorism knows no limits. Sometimes it is even directed at Palestinians' brethren who seem too moderate. Thus, extremists burn down a high-class hotel in Gaza. Yasser, the owner, describes the disaster to his friend Jamal, the airline captain. An unending series of terrorist attacks dramatically alters public opinion in Israel. Previously, a vast majority supported and believed in the peace process. Now, Israelis no longer trust the Palestinian partners. The change of political mood brings Arik Sharon to power. Promising security, he proves unable to fulfill his promise. Political negotiation is no longer an option. The war of attrition goes on. Here, Palestinian crops are destroyed to open free, safe access to Israeli settlements. Captain Jamal once thought that violence and war would pass him by. Now he finds himself at the eye of the confrontation. Evening changes the face of Gaza. The bustling, colorful streets are suddenly silent and empty. The Palestinian Airlines crew has just learned that tomorrow they're flying to Mecca. They want to celebrate, but where? In the few places that remain open, an atmosphere of sorrow and despair makes merriment impossible. They walk in and out of cafes, looking for a peaceful haven that just isn't there anymore. the Gaza airport is closed for commercial flights Israel is, however, inclined to permit flights of pilgrims to Mecca, an important event in the life of every faithful Muslim. But another terrorist attack takes place in Israel, and the long-awaited pilgrimage flights may be cancelled. <laughs> في 
امل انكم تسافروا؟ اي بتفاوضوا على والله هينا زينا زيكم يا خالي نستنى عبين ما يقولوا لنا يلا اوكي هلا نو واي نو واي نو واي انه تصيري انا لحد الان لسه لحد الان مفيش يعني خلال نص ساعة يمكن انا كان نفسي تصير اليوم عن جد كان نفسي مع انه الكل كان بيقول انه هاي مجازفة ومجازفة بس الواحد صار بس 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 نحن اي فرصة عشان يكسر شو كده ما قلكم فيها يعني هاب بها طلعة كثير يعني مغامرة مغامرة الرب واحد والعمر واحد شو صار؟ بدي اقول لي قالوا لهم على المعبر انا بدي على المعبر على المعبر وعلى المعبر على المعبر شو صار؟ على المعبر الو مرحبا كابتن كابتن في حكوا للركاب انهم حيروحوا على المعبر عشان يطلعوا على العريش قالوا للركاب انهم حيروحوا على العريش عشان يروحوا عن طريق العريش لجدة نعم in the end, the passengers and crew travel by bus to take off from El Arish in Egypt. After four years of activity, peace agreements and near sovereignty, Palestinian airlines return to the facility that had been their host before they had an airport of their own. As things appear at the moment, the Gaza International Airport will remain deserted for a long time. But beyond the airport, new and violent winds of war threaten to drown the entire Western world in blood and fire. Winds that embody the relationship between East and West, the contrast between fanatical terrorism and a legitimate struggle. The fragile line that distinguishes an innocent airliner from an airborne instrument of hell and a collapsing peace process from chaos. But the Middle East is always full of surprises. The struggle may escalate into a full-scale regional war, but a return to negotiations is just as likely. As they say in this part of the world, everything is in the hands of Allah. The crew of Palestinian airlines has scattered to the corners of the earth. Jamal Mohammed, the senior pilot, will soon immigrate to Australia. He wants to enjoy a normal, peaceful life on a new continent where flying an airplane from one place to another is a routine, everyday affair. Abd El Nasser, the co-pilot, has settled in Florida, where he is now completing the quota of flight hours required for his license to a better future. Abir Dayouk, the stewardess, is still in Gaza, waiting for her dreams to come true. And one thing is certain, if she ever flies again as an airline hostess, she will also have an independent state. <laughs>